clinical practice guidelines are one source of evidence-based material. Once you've located a guideline, there, depending on your assignment requirements, there are a couple of things to consider. Always have a look at the date of publication and you will often see that the review date is five years from publication. This is standard practice in a number of the health services. So just make sure that the documents you are looking at are as current as possible. As well as the content of the guide itself, it's really important to have a look at the levels or the types of evidence that they have incorporated. I'm just going to scroll down to the list of references. So please excuse this. It's always worth quickly scanning through a list of references to see the types of resources that they have used. You can see here that they've used some of the UK NICE guides. They've identified some randomised control trials. They found some systematic reviews and meta-analyses. So this particular guideline is current and they've used a range of resources including high levels of evidence in their document. I'd like to show you another guideline. This one is published by one of our hospitals and it's a much briefer document than the first one. Now that isn't in itself a problem but what I've noted is that it doesn't include a list of references so you can't check to see what sources they've used and I also can't find a date on the page. I'm not meaning to cast aspersions on this clinical practice guideline. It's a quality resource and it's um, in use in our hospitals. However, if you need to demonstrate that high levels of evidence have been used in the document, I wouldn't particularly recommend using this one. Try locating one of the clinical practice guidelines that provides a list of references and make sure that the document is current. Clinical practice guidelines are just one of the various evidence-based resources available, but there are a very useful clinical and practical tool.